Deanna Durbin, Alan Marshall, Lucille Gleason. The Gulf Screen Guild Theater. Your host, the director of the star's own theater, Roger Pryor. Good evening, everyone. Your neighborhood good Gulf dealer and the Gulf Oil Companies welcome you once again to the Gulf Screen Guild Theater. Tonight... We play host to a young lady of fiction who is beloved by most of the readers of America, Alice Adams, the heroine of the famous novel by Booth Tarkington. Starring on our program tonight as Alice will be one of the best-loved real girls in America today, Deanna Durbin. And the role of Alice will be the first all-dramatic part of her career. Starring with Deanna will be the popular Alan Marshall and another favorite of yours, Lucille Gleason. Our stars will be on stage in just a moment, and during those few seconds... Bud, suppose you tell the folks what you were telling me at rehearsal. Glad to, Roger. Folks, during the summer, you've probably washed your automobile a number of times, removed the dirt and the dust from the outside of your car. But have you been thoughtful about the inside, about your engine and chassis? Right now, for instance, your motor oil may be so diluted, so dirty and full of grit that it actually is harmful to bearings and other moving parts. So change your motor oil soon and make it a change to Gulf Lube. You see, Gulf Lube, the finest regular-priced motor oil Gulf has ever sold, is refined by the exclusive Multisol process. As a result, it gives you high mileage, low consumption. In addition, Gulf Lube resists sludging, helps prevent hard carbon deposits. And when you change to Gulf Lube motor oil, safeguard your chassis and the body of your car with Gulflex registered lubrication, a lubrication service that uses not just one grease, but six scientifically developed lubricants to protect the vital points of your car. Protect your car two ways at once with Gulflex registered lubrication and Gulf Lube motor oil. That burst of applause, ladies and gentlemen, is for our stars who have just appeared on stage. And now, Oscar Bradley's music opens the story of Alice Adams. You'll hear Deanna Durbin as Alice, Alan Marshall as Arthur Russell and Lucille Gleason as Mrs. Adams. Alice Adams, a book about those golden years between fairy tales and grown-up parties of those bitter, sweet years of adolescence that we leave forever behind at the decrepit age of 21. 21. How many years has it been since I... Well, never mind about that. Uh, Let's open our book to chapter one, page one. There. It's 1941, an evening in May. Our story opens with... No, Freddie, I couldn't possibly let you have another dance. Why, my program's been filled for just ages and ages. No, Tom, you be a dear and pay a little attention to Mildred Palmer. After all, this is her party. Oh, you naughty, naughty boys. Why don't you dance with the other girls? Yes, the orchestra is simply divine, Harry. But there are dozens of perfectly lovely girls here who are simply dying to... to... Oh, darn that phonograph record. Alice? Yes, Mother? Are you most ready to leave for the party, dear? Your brother's waking up. Oh, you look lovely, Alice. You'll be the belle of the party tonight. Did you know this is my old organdy? Of course not. Not with those new flounces. I I just hope no one recognizes it. Oh, if you just had some flowers. Oh, I have. Look, Violet. Alice, you mean some young man sent you a corsage? No. No, I picked them in the park this afternoon when the gardener wasn't looking. Oh. But they look very expensive, don't you think? They're beautiful, darling. But it isn't right. It isn't fair. If your father just had a little gumption... Uh, talking about to me again? What's wrong now, Mother? Dad, I was just coming in to say goodnight to you. Well, say, you look mighty fine, Alice. Mighty fine. Who's your beau? You are, of course. Oh, sure. Sure, but I mean your second best. The one who's taking you to the party tonight. Her brother Walter is taking her. Oh. In a broken-down, borrowed flivver. 
And it's a shame, that's what it is. Now, Mother. Well, it is a shame, Alice. Oh, oh, I've got to get my cake. That's Walter Fountain. Any other father with a daughter as pretty as Alice would try to get ahead. Instead of depending on her brother, she could have any boy in town if only he had some money to buy decent clothes now, for her. you're hinting again that I hand in my resignation to Mr. Lamb, what I just want to... What social standing will Alice have as long as she's the daughter of an underpaid oh, clerk? I knew it. You're going to start harping again on me opening that, that glue factory. And what is wrong with a glue factory, I would like to know? Nothing's wrong with a glue factory except that it takes money. Well, I'm off. I Goodbye, darling. Don't, don't, don't wait up I'm for me. Mother, Mother Beth, please. please. Yeah. 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 Yes, Walter, coming. I'll be right there. Oh, I hope I look nice enough. You look beautiful. Have a good time, Alice. I mean to. Oh, I mean to. I'm coming, Walter. <laughs> Now, please, Walter, you mustn't forget to ask Ella Dowling for a dance, and Henrietta Lamb and Mildred, too. Hey, look, I'm as liable to dance with those sticks as I am to buy a bucket of rusty tacks and eat them. Now, just as soon as this number's over, I'm going back to the coat room and smoke myself to death. Oh, oh, no, Wally, you mustn't leave me alone. There must be some girl you wouldn't mind too much. How about Mildred Palmer? Nah, she's too bony. She dances like she was doing herself a favor. But she's always admired you. Really, she has, Walter. Why, just the other now, day... Now, don't she... give me that. You just want to palm me off on her so as you can dance with that new man she's got. Why, Walter, I never thought any such thing. Uh, you might as well forget about him. I'd heard them talking about it in the coat room. He and Mildred are practically engaged. What's his name? Arthur Russell. He's a second or third cousin or something. He has wads of dough. Shh, quiet, Walter. They're going to dance right by us. Well, I ain't thrilled. Why, you naughty old Walter. Huh? Aren't you ashamed to be such a wonderful dancer and then only dance with little me? Hey, what's the idea? Why, you could go on the stage if you wanted to. Hey. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have people clapping their hands and shouting, Hurrah! Hey, hey calm down. Hurrah for Walter Adams. Hurrah! If you yell any louder, the place will be pinched. Come on, come on, relax. They've gone by and they didn't even give you a tumble. Thank God that's over. Look, you crushed my violets, and they're all wilted. Oh, here, I'll ditch them back of this chair. Hey, listen, i got to get some air. You tag some bird to take me on for this next number, will you? I'll be back here. No, Walter, you can't leave me here alone. Walter, please. Oh, Walter. <laughs> rushing you tonight, Miss Adams. This is the fourth time you've been in here to fix your hair and part of your nose. Oh, yes, I've just danced myself out of breath. Poor boys, I don't want to hurt their feelings and say no. Oh, then I guess you don't belong to this dance program I find on the floor. There ain't a single gentleman's name on it. Oh, dear, no. It must belong to some poor wallflower. Poor thing, I must try to get some of my bows to dance with her. Well, goodbye now. Why, good evening, Mrs. Palmer. What a perfectly lovely party. What? Oh, good evening, Miss Adams. Why aren't you dancing? Oh, I have been. But it's so warm, I've done a perfectly horrible thing. I'm hiding from my partner. Isn't that scandalous of me? Uh, pardon me. I think that... You I... know, I think older women are marvelous. Really, I'd rather talk to women like you than to girls my own age any time. We'll talk some other time, if you don't mind. My husband is calling me. But, Mrs. Palmer, I... Oh, yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> Pardon me, uh, you're Miss Adams, aren't you? Why, yes, I... Uh, Mildred sent me over to dance this next to last dance with you. She said she was afraid you'd lost your partner. Lost not... Why, no, of course not. Oh, uh, well, then I'd better... Well, he, um, he has disappeared just for the moment. Well, perhaps I'd better introduce myself. I'm Arthur Russell. I know. You're Mildred Palmer's cousin, and, well... Yeah, go on. I've overheard the coach room gossip, too. <clears throat> I've got wads of money, and Mildred and I are practically engaged. But do you know something? It's all a pack of lies. Not really. Well, there's not a shred of truth in it. They're hardly related at all. Our friendship is strictly platonic, and uh, it's my father, not I, who has all the money. You're terribly honest. And you're terribly pretty. Of course, that's just my personal opinion, so you can take it for what it's worth. I like it, Mr. Russell. Uh, Mr. Russell's my father. I'm just Arthur. I'd like to ask you for this dance, but uh, if your partner's coming back... Oh, uh, no, no. Well, I mean, I I think I ought to teach him a lesson, don't you? I certainly do. May I kidnap you? You, you want to? I do. Then you may. Arthur. Thank you. Alice. You know, you 
dance as though you really like it. In fact, you dance better than any girl I know. Oh, really? Well, thank you. Where do you live? Uh, one of those show places out on the drive? Oh, no. It, it's just a foolish little house out on Maple Street. It's not the good part of town anymore, but, well, Father's so attached to it, we've given up all hope of ever getting him away. That proves that rich men can be sentimental, doesn't it? <laughs> I think I'd like him. Is he in business? Yes. Although we've tried to talk him into retiring and turning it over to Walter. He's my brother. But no, Father simply won't hear of it. I suspect he's afraid that sending Walter away to Harvard has made him just a little bit snobbish. Oh, really? Well, it's, it's really not fair for me to say that. It, it's just that Walter's so intelligent and interested in his books that, well, that he doesn't even see ordinary people, much less associate with them. He's on a, a higher plane. Oh. How are you doing? Oh, uh, 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 let's go out on the terrace, Arthur. It's very warm, don't you think, for this time of year? Hey, I'm what's a... the matter with you? You sore or something? Gee, I didn't mean to be so long, sis, but I got tied up in a crap game with the servant. <laughs> Oh, Walter, stop. I forgot to tell you, Arthur, that my brother also has a very peculiar sense of humor. Walter, this is Mr. Russell. Arthur, this is my brother. Hello. Oh, how do you do? Well, sis, so you finally... Oh, do look at the orchestra leader. Isn't he funny? He's waving his arms and making faces just like he was in a minstrel show. Yeah, he seems to be waving at us. Oh, he is waving at us. He's a friend of mine. Hiya, Louie. Hiya, Big John. What are you doing here? Walter. I had to drag my sister, Louie. She didn't have a date. Walter, I want to go home. Go home? You mean home? Good night, Mr. Russell. So nice to have met you. Lovely dance, lovely evening, lovely... Oh, come on, Walter. Please take me home. Bad as that. Worse, Mother. Walter stood there right in the middle of the floor. Right in front of Arthur Russell. And he called, he yelled to Skinny Louie. The one they call Hot Lips. Oh, I could have died right there. I wish I had died right there. Oh, Alice, darling. <laughs> well, there's no use in carrying on like this. Come on now. Come into bed and get some sleep, and we'll talk about it in the morning. Tomorrow. No, I, I couldn't go to sleep. Well, it's late. Just let me stay out here on the porch for a while. Well, Please. All right, but not long, mind you. If I don't hear you come upstairs in half an hour, I'm coming down for you. Yes. I'll go away. That's what I'll do. I'll just disappear. They'll never see me again, not one of them. <laughs> Hello there. Huh? I'm the honest kidnapper, remember? Oh, Why did you run off from me at the dance? I've had an awful time finding you. You know, a foolish little house out on Maple Street isn't much of an address. But I don't understand. You aren't angry. Angry? Why should I be... Do you know something? As I was walking up here, I had the strangest feeling, as though I were falling in love. Do you suppose it could be you or, or the moonlight? Must be the moonlight. Well, you may be right, but I think we ought to find out, don't you? You mean you want to see me again? What about tomorrow? The weatherman has personally assured me it'll be a beautiful day. Oh, tomorrows are always beautiful. Always. Yeah. Good night. Tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Until tomorrow. There's so much for Act One of Alice Adams. Our Gulf Theater curtain will rise on Act Two in less than a minute. And you'll hear the second act of tonight's story. Meanwhile, suppose we hear from a young fellow who says... Friends, next time you're out driving, listen to your motor as you accelerate. If you hear a knocking, pinging sound, that's not only a sign of waste of power and waste of gasoline, but it may also mean unnecessary repair bills in the future. 
So to help prevent that knock in your motor, get Gulf No Knocks gasoline. You see, Gulf No Knocks has been raised to such a high anti-knock rating that it gives you an entirely new appreciation of gasoline quality. With Gulf No Knocks, you not only get maximum mileage, but also a quieter, smoother running motor and steady, more trouble-free performance. So to help your car run better, stay in finer condition, and last longer, ask for that extra value gasoline, Gulf No Knocks. Stop tomorrow at your neighborhood good golf dealers at the same service station where you get Gulf Flex registered lubrication and Gulf Lube motor oil. And now the curtain of the Gulf Screen Guild Theater rises on the second act of Alice Adams, adapted for radio by Charles Taswell and starring Deanna Durbin as Alice, Alan Marshall as Arthur Russell, and Lucille Gleason as Mrs. Adams. A dog-eared page marks our place in the story of Alice Adams. Turning the pages, we learn that Arthur did see Alice on the next day. And the next day. And the next. Well, it appears that they went right on seeing each other all through the summer. But Alice, the foolish girl, forgot the old adage. What a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Witness, for example, chapter 15. Father just loves to play at being a financial wizard. You know what he's done, Arthur? Started a chain of factories. Well, I took my last dollar, Mother. But that old barn is now the home of Madam Glue Works. Chapter 20. Father has only a few close friends, but they're all business magnets, Arthur. Why, he and old Mr. Lamb are like brothers. Get my hands on Virgil Adams, I'll skin him alive. He resigns after 25 years in my payroll and runs off with a glue formula that's half mine. Chapter 25. I sometimes wish I'd learned to do things for myself like other girls, Arthur. But we've always had so many servants. I'm utterly helpless. Well, Virgil, if your glue factory ever gets on its feet, the first thing we're going to have is a new washing machine and a girl to run it. Chapter 26. Uh oh. This is the turning point. This is where it happens. This is where Arthur asks the question that Alice has been dreading to hear. Alice, why have you never asked me to dinner? Why can't I meet your parents? Well, there's no reason. Well, anyone would think they were ogres and I was a freak. Oh, it isn't that. Really, it isn't. Well, I'll have to meet them sometime, and the sooner the better, I'd say. Oh, yes. Yes, you're right, Arthur, if it can be arranged. What do you mean? Well, uh, Mother's frightfully social. The house is always filled with people. I'm entirely free for the next two weeks. Oh, you are? Uh, with the exception of Thursday night. Thursday night? Oh, how unfortunate. Mother told me this morning that Thursday's the only evening this week that we'll have open. Oh, but uh, I meant Thursday of next week. This Thursday will be fine. Oh. Then uh, everything's set, hmm? All right. All right, Arthur. I'll tell Mother you'll have dinner with us on Thursday. upstairs and rest for a few minutes. There isn't time, Mother. It's six o'clock already. He'll be here any minute. Oh, I wish it hadn't turned out so hot. Oh, so do I. According to the paper, it's the hottest day in 30 years. What about Father? Is he wearing his evening clothes? Well, he made a lot of objections, but he's getting into them. There. Those roses sort of brighten things up. What's the name of the girl you hired to serve? Melina. Oh, 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 he's come. He's here, Mother. Melina? Melina? Yes, ma'am? The door, answer the door, Melina. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'll do that directly. Just do Good heavens, what's that? I think she fell down the cellar steps. <laughs> oh, mother. Now, don't you worry, dear. If she's dead, we won't say a word about it till after dinner. <laughs> you run upstairs and fix your hair, and I'll answer the door myself. over there, Arthur. Thank you. I do hope you won't hate us too much for making you dine in such warm weather. Oh, it's not warm. It's plain-danged hot, Alice. 
I'm sweating like a horse. Father. Oh, very Joe. <laughs> He's always saying the most absurd things, trying to shock strangers. You'd better ring the bell again, Mother. Yes, dear. Um, what do you think of our little girl, Mr. Rocco? Well, I... You know, the fellow who marries her will be a lucky man. Oh, dear, I, I can't imagine why Melina doesn't come. She, she's really most inefficient, but she's been with the family so long, we just put up with it. What you want, Miss Adams, a soup? Yes. Didn't you hear the bell, Melina? Oh, yes, um, but I was rubbing some liniment on it. I do hope you like soup, Arthur. Oh, yes, I do. Although it's hardly appropriate for this weather. We should have had something iced or jelly. <laughs> Be careful, Melina. Oh, yes, and uh, you'd be kind of shaky, too, Miss Alice, if you'd had the fall I had. Here, just look at my knee. Melina, I'm quite sure Mr. Russell isn't interested. Hey, what kind of soup is this? Consomme, Father. Mm, it tastes like plain horse liniment to me. Don't you think so, Mr. Russell? Well, I, uh, y- yes, it does a little. Yeah, give me a spoon let me taste it. Mm. Well, yeah, that's liniment, all right. You know what must have happened? I must have spilled some in the soup when I was rubbing it on me. <laughs> Please take this dreadful soup away, Melina. We'll go on to the entree. But just hold everything, folks. I'll be back in a flash with a... The what is that word she just said? Do you have some more coffee, Arthur? No, thank you. Uh, I'll have some more, Alice. Yes, Father dear. I'm... I'm afraid the dinner was a little too heavy for you, Arthur. Oh, no, not much. I, I mean, it, it, it wasn't at oh, all. Much better when you cook it, Mother. Hey, where in the dickens did you get this Molina? Coffee, Mother? Uh, no, thank you. My uh, husband is in the glue business, Mr. Russell. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe you've seen my factory. It's in that old barn down on cream, the pipe. Cream, Father? You know I never take cream, Alice. I'm making the best darn glue in the country today, Mr. Russell. Sugar, I, Father. I had sugar. Yes, sir, Mr. Russell. It took me ten years to develop the formula. I worked on it during my spare time while I was clerking for old man Lamb. Now, Father, please... Oh, isn't that someone at the door? Now, I wonder who it could be. Father, you'd better answer. I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. Hey, what was that went through the express? <laughs> Only Melina, Father. My, isn't weather a funny thing? Yesterday it was cool and the angels had charge of it. Yes, the old fool is eating. I want to see him right now. And today the angels all flew away and someone moved the equator right up to you the North Pole. Stephen Swindler that he's going to jail. Virgin, that sounds like Mr. Lamb. Maybe, maybe I'd better go see what he wants. After that Excuse me, Mr. Russell. Along yes, to me sure. and he stole it. Well, when they got the equator to the North Pole, they just forgot about it and... And here we are, you, aren't we? You might trust the sweat for 25 years. You go behind my back and... Perhaps, I, me. perhaps I'd better I go and see what's the matter. matter. Excuse me, You're Mr. Russell. You're going to have yes, plenty of time to regret this behind bars. You can't swindle me. Well, a penny for your thoughts. No, I'll bid more. A rose. A poor little dead rose for your thoughts, Mr. Arthur Russell. Will you ever forgive me? For what? Cheer up. Your fearful duty is done and you can run home as soon as you want to. That's what you're dying to do, isn't it? Not at all. You're upset, aren't you? No, of course not. Of course, this this weather does affect me. Maybe it's this ugly little house. Or was it Mother? Or Father? Or me? That's it, isn't it? You know now that everything I told you was a lie. That we haven't any money. That our maid was hired for the day. That the dinner was horrible. That we're just ordinary that we're not worth anyone's notice. I tell you, nothing's upset me. You know, I have the strangest feeling. I feel as if I were going to be with you only a few minutes more in my whole life. You're never coming here again. Why, it's finished, isn't it? Look, I'm afraid you're... You're you're tired and nervous. I, I really ought to be going. Yes, yes, of course you are. When everything's spoiled, people can't do anything else but run away from it. So goodbye. Well, at least we'll only... only say goodnight. No... Goodbye, Mr. Russell. That's the only word, isn't it? Goodbye. Let's be honest enough to say it. Goodbye, Mr. Russell. Goodbye. I'm sorry for busting in like I did, Adams, but... You've got to admit I thought I had cause. You ought to know me better than to think I'd steal, Mr. Lamb. Like he said, every bit of that blue formula was worked out on his own time. And he never would have resigned from your company to start his factory if he hadn't wanted to get money from me, Mr. Lamb. 
She thought I was ashamed because I didn't have things other girls had. I know. I know, Alice. I'd feel the same way about my daughter. Well, come down and talk to me tomorrow, Adam. There's just a chance, just a chance, mind you, I might put a little money in that factory of yours. Well, Mr. Lyle. Well, good night. Good night, everybody. Did, did, did you hear that, Mother? Why, if he does that, Adam's glue will be the biggest thing in the country someday. Yes, Virgil. And Alice will be able to hold up her head with any girl in town. Isn't it wonderful, Alice? Yes, very wonderful. I'm glad everything turned out so well. So very well. Hadn't you better trot off to bed, Dad? You've had such a hard day. Yeah, but from now on, it's going to be easy. Good night, baby. Coming, Mother? Yes, Virgil. In a moment. Alice. What about Mr. Russell? Oh, he left. I'm sorry. It's all right. No, it isn't. It's our fault. Your father's and mine. Can you ever forgive us? There's nothing to forgive, Mother. It's just the way things are. It's also clear to me now. You can't try to be what you're really not. The only good in pretending is the fun we get out of fooling ourselves that we fool somebody else. I'm so sorry, Alice. I'm not. Run on to bed now. I'll turn out the light. I want to go out on the porch for a minute. Good night, dear. Night, Mother. fellow who thought he was falling in love, remember? But he didn't know if it was you or the moonlight. You, you came back? I never went away. I've been waiting right here. Why? I was waiting for you. But it's all over. You know me now for what I am. A liar and a cheat and... Don't you know that people in love are deaf, blind, and dumb? They can be poor and still be rich. They can wear rags and be dressed like kings and queens. They can be nobodies and be envied by all the somebodies. Those are people in love. I love you, Alice. I loved you yesterday. I love you today. I love you tomorrow. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Do you hear me? I love you. Alice, I love you. Please, say something. Gee whiz. Thank you, Deanna, and Alan, and Lucille. You were splendid. I know you all did your extra best because it was for a most worthy cause, the Motion Picture Relief Fund. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the money that would ordinarily go to the stars who appear here in the Gulf Screen Guild Theater, Gulf gives instead to the Motion Picture Relief Fund to help meet its needs and to build a home for the members of the film industry who can no longer take care of themselves. <laughs> Week, ladies and gentlemen, the screen's great comedy hit, Nothing Sacred, with Robert Taylor, Barbara Stanwyck, and James Gleason. Music will be by Oscar Bradley, assisted by Frank Tours. Until then, this is Roger Pryor speaking for your neighborhood good golf dealer and saying, Good night, everyone. <laughs> Now, Gulf brings you a suggestion from Washington about national defense. Help assure America's national safety and freedom. Join your friends and neighbors in helping to defend our great country by buying United States defense bonds and stamps. Buy them at your post office or bank and keep on buying them. For complete details, write USA, care of this station. Deanna Durbin may currently be seen in Universal's It Started With Eve. Alan Marshall appears through the courtesy of David O. Selznick Productions. Lucille Gleason will soon be seen in RKO's The Gay Falcon. Tune in next week when the Gulf Theater presents Robert Taylor, Barbara Stanwyck, and James Gleason in Nothing Sacred. But Easton speaking, this is the Columbia Broadcasting System.